You might be sitting around and wondering whether it is possible to get a loan to buy a business with no money down. Well, guess what? It is possible. And in today's conversation, I'm going to clarify for you how to get a business acquisition loan with no money down. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweetie Kiwi Show. How are you today? I hope you are doing fantastic. I'm doing splendid. If you are doing as sublime as I am, go grab a cup of coffee or tea or vodka and let's roll. In today's conversation, I want to talk to you about how to get a loan to buy a business with no money down. But before we get into the nitty gritty, let's first define what we mean by business acquisition loan. This is a loan to buy a business. And it's also called a business purchase loan. And this is the type of loan someone would get if they wanted to purchase a business, but uh, does not have the capital to buy the business outright. And um, how much you can get to buy a business depends on various factors, including your business experience, your monthly income, your credit history, and the value of the business you're trying to purchase in the first place. Typically, a small business acquisition loan might range anywhere from 50000 to $5 million. We've seen... We've seen transactions of uh, 10 millions also. And uh, the, the easiest business acquisition loan to get depends on your on uh, myriad factors also. If you had if you have, let's say you have bad credit, it will be easier for you to get a, a crowdfunding loan or equipment financing loan than getting a traditional bank loan. If you have a stellar personal credit, but no business credentials, it may be difficult for you to get anything except a personal loan. As a general rule of thumb, it's easier to get an online loan than a bank loan, both in terms of uh, their borrower requirements and the time and effort it takes to apply for the loan. And uh, you can definitely get a an acquisition loan with no money down. But the thing you have to understand is that uh, it depends on the lenders. But uh, most, for example, most SBA loans, small business administration loans, do require a down payment. However, you can get an online loan with no money down. And uh, you can also get a business acquisition loan even if you have bad credit. It's not really uh, a matter of personal credit worthiness. There are other factors that come into play. I will explain that later on. But you, you, you can have, you can get a business, a business acquisition loan even if you have poor credit, but you will not have as many financing options to choose from as you would if you have uh, if you had good credit and you will pay higher interest rates than someone with good credit. Just have to know that. Right. And uh, can you get a business acquisition loan with no collateral? Yes. Answer is a resounding. Yes, you can get a business acquisition loan with no collateral, but probably not a bank loan. Most online business loans don't require any specific collateral. But you will likely have to agree to a UCC1 lien, it's also called a blanket lien, on your business assets and sign a personal guarantee. So after the overview, folks, let me now give you the step by step. There are seven steps I want you to follow right now. Please take some notes to get a loan to buy a business with no money down. First, you need to strengthen your credit, your credit worthiness. And this is very important. And when I'm when I'm uh, referring to credit worthiness, I'm speaking to I'm speaking about your personal credit and your business credit. Very important. If you want your business acquisition loan application to have the strongest showing, you got to strengthen two met- metrics: your personal credit and finances, and if applicable, your current business's credit and finances. Let me elaborate here. You, you, before you jump into any sort of loan application, you will want to get a thorough understanding of not only your own finances and credit, but also that of the business you plan on, on acquiring and your current business. This will require a bit of work, though. But the cool thing here is that it would allow you to identify which loan is the best fit for you. And that's what you really want. You want to have an idea, a clear idea of uh, the kind of uh, process, the kind of process you're getting yourself into. And by doing so, you are 
finding out whether the purchase of this business is actually going to be worth it. As the borrower, it is your job. Remember, it is your job to convince the lender that you are credit worthy. So it is in your best interest to do it properly. So in terms of personal finances, you want to review quickly your personal uh, credit score, your tax returns, the outstanding debts you have, the cash flows and collateral. And uh, in addition to uh, you also want to have a, some kind of a information or paperwork ready in terms of your business plan, your industry experience, your past entrepreneurial experience and your personal or business value add. In terms of the business finances, you need to think about the business credit score, the cash flows, the financial statements, the past company performance, the business tax returns, the balance sheet and other collateral. When we speak about financial statements in terms of uh, loan application, we are referring to three things primarily. The, st the statement of uh, cash flows, the balance sheet, and the income statements. All right. And when I'm speaking about the business finances, I'm speaking about both the finances of the business you plan on purchasing and, if applicable, your current business. It has to be the whole analysis here has to be holistic. So step number one, you need to strengthen your credit worthiness. Step number two, I want you to perform due diligence on the target business. The business you're trying to buy, you want to conduct thorough due diligence. Very important. And, uh, and, and this is kind of important because you need to actually have an idea, a clear idea of what you're getting yourself into. And there is a checklist of things you need to do to verify things you need to do to before you buy a business. There are several ways of doing this. You can hire a due diligence professional or a company to do, to do this for you, okay? And uh, you've already met with the owner, you have reviewed the financials and the opportunity seems ideal, right? After negotiating back and forth, the two of you totally agree uh, on a deal, yet the deal is subject to certain contingencies before it is finally closed. And uh, when we speak about due diligence, what is it? Due diligence is basically the process whereby you, the buyer, verify the information about the target business as provided by the seller. You want to make sure that that information is correct and accurate. And due, due, due diligence is uh, in almost all sales a condition of the buyer's offer and the business conditions must meet the buyer's expectation before the deal is finally closed. And if there are any problems uncovered, this is the time that must be addressed. And uh, you, you, you need to make sure that you prepare for this part of the process ahead of time. And in terms of uh, due diligence, as I said earlier, there is a checklist, things you have to do. And again, if you're not a professional, it's just great to hire someone. But you still need to know the, the, the key elements so that when you have that conversation with a professional due diligence officer, you know exactly what he or she is talking about in the first place. All right. So you need to review and verify all financial informations. From from financial statements to tax returns to uh, to any, you know anything else, you need to review and verify the business structure and operations. You need to uh, review and verify all material contracts. Material here means a significant contract. You need to review and verify all customer information. You have to do the same thing for all employee information. You need you need to check for any legal issues. Very important. You need to review and verify all physical assets and real estate. You need to review and verify all intellectual property. IP is kind of critical. It is intangible. It is an intangible asset, but it is an asset anyway. So intellectual property includes things like trademarks, copyrights, patents, and other exclusive intellectual information that is owned by the company you're trying to buy. So everything from product inventions, formulas, recipes, or technical know-how all these things go into the IP. Just to close on this, um, in this phase, what, what I want to say here is that due diligence is a very detailed process that will give you a much clearer and more well-rounded picture of the company you are about to purchase, whether or not the asking price is fair and its future earning potential. So with the assistance of an experienced business broker or due diligence officer, as well as your attorney and accountant, you should be able to uncover any problems or issues and make a sound decision as to whether or not to purchase the company. 
Step number three. So step number one, you want to strengthen your credit worthiness. Step number two, you want to perform due diligence on the target business. Step number three, I want you to buy an industry research report. So if you're trying to get a loan to buy a business with no money down, you need to buy an industry research report. Why? You've already done some due diligence of the company, so you know what's going on internally in the company. Now you need to have you need to have an external assessment of the company, and this is what an industry research reports brings to you. So you want to have you want to have a, a duality here, right? Internal view and external view. And an industry research report talks about it, it tells you it gives you an overview about what's going on in the industry, things like supply chain, the major players, the main activities, similar industry designations. You also have you you also have uh, a an overview of the life cycle, the revenue volatility in the in the in the industry, the capital intensity, the industry assistant, the concentration level. All of those things are helping you understand the industry you're getting yourself into. You need to have a, in a, a typical industry research report has a key industry data, right? You have industry performance. You actually, uh, and by performance, I'm referring to things like revenue, IVA, establishments, enterprises, employments, exports, imports, wages, domestic demand. You also want to have an industry outlook, right? This is where you are having an analysis of expectations up for the industry for, let's say, the five, three, ten years. And this is a, a section that talks about expected changes in revenue and profit in light of the trends in the external drivers and internal structures and industry revenue is forecast on an annual basis with analysis to back it up you also uh, have an idea of products and markets in the industry you have an idea of a competitive landscape right whether you have a high concentration a medium concentration or a low concentration so high concentration means what it means that you have an uh, oligopoly you have a few players that control the price of the good or service. If you have medium concentration, you have a number of major players, but the industry is competitive in a number of products or market niches. And then you have low concentration. In other words, you have the industry is made up of small players that have little market power. Okay, and you also wanna think about the major companies in the industry, the operating conditions. So the bottom line here is that an industry research report will give you an idea of what's going on in the industry. I'll be right back. Right after this, don't go anywhere. Welcome back, folks, to another edition of the Awesome Sweaty Kiwi Show. We are still having a conversation today about how to get a loan to buy a business with no money down. So step number one, strengthen your credit worthiness. Step number two, perform due diligence on the target business. Step number three, you want to buy an industry research report. Number four, you need to know the key types of business acquisition loans available on the market. So the bottom line here is you need to ask yourself, which loan is right for you? Okay, there are a lot of loans. There are a lot of, there are a lot of ways to acquire a business with no money down. So you need to know the, the gamut of loans out there. So you have SBA loans, you have conventional business loans, you have seller financing, you have rollover for business startups. Okay, and so let's just talk about him. Let's just talk, talk about those four. So SBA loans, this is actually a, a loan utilizing the Small Business Administration is by and large the best option for small businesses and entrepreneurs. And an SBA loan is not actually provided by the SBA. The, the agency guarantees uh, up to 85% of the loan in the case that the borrower defaults, okay? And so the, the, the terms you have uh, from the loan amounts, 5,000 to 5 million, loan terms, five to 25 years, interest rates, seven to 10%, and the fees are typically one to, 30, one to three or 4%. And um, the, uh, the SBA loan, you need to have a for-profit business, it has to be in the United States and uh, there has to be sufficient collateral. And then you have a conventional business loan, the one that we are, everybody's uh, is used to, right? Same thing here, you have uh, the loan amount or, or 
a little uh, lower than the SBA loan. So you have 25 grand all the way to a million. And the loan terms are usually negotiated with the lender, typically one to five years. And interest rate seven to 30 percent. And then you have seller financing. So if you want to buy an existing business, but don't think you will qualify for conventional financing, there are a few alternatives for individuals and businesses unable to meet the stringent requirements of the SBA or conventional loans. Some sellers will be willing to conduct the sale of the business as a loan. So in this instance, the buyer would reach an agreement with the seller in which they would uh, provide a certain amount of money as down payment with the remainder being paid over, over uh, an agreed upon period of time and a some rate of interest. Okay. And uh, then you have a rollover for a business startup. So this is called ROPS and uh, ROPS is a little known option for entrepreneurs and small businesses. It involves withdrawing your own fund from your 401k and putting them towards the business venture. Because this method does not require any monthly payments, it is technically not a loan. Nonetheless, it can be a valuable business financing option for entities unable to secure a more traditional bank loan. And uh, there, there are several requirements for uh, ROBS. We have covered this on another show, so I'm not going to get into uh, too much detail here. And then I also want to talk about the fact that there are different ways you can finance your purchase. So if you don't qualify for, let's say, a, um, a ROBS or seller financing or conventional business loan or uh, an SBA loan, there are other sources. So personal funds, for example. Okay. What I'm trying to say here, I'm trying to sum up what I just said before. There are different ways you can finance your purchase with no money down. Personal funds. So if you have a ton, ton of money saved up, maybe you can use it. But the whole idea here is not to put any money down. So we probably don't have the money. So that's not a really good option. But what I'm trying to say here is that the personal funds can also come from family members. In other words, you're not you're not borrowing from someone, but you actually get the, the money from your entourage. OK, seller financing. I already said that you have a bank loan. You can think about that as well. Now, the, the bank loan. Again, I'm trying to re I'm trying to recap this this uh, section here. The bank loan are harder to get. The bank loans are harder to get. But um, the if you have still if you have stellar credit then you might qualify for those loans. You have the SBA loans. Of course, this is pretty cool. Also, this is very good to uh, to have in mind. And um, you have the leverage buyouts. And th th this involves leveraging some of the business's assets to, to help fund the acquisition. And this is rarely the form of the only form of funding, however, and often involves loans or seller financing in, addi in addition to that. And you can also assume the debt. So assumption of debt. So with this financing option, you essentially purchase both the businesses, assets and liabilities. In other words, you might assume existing debts to do so. You often need the approval of debtors. So step number five, you need to understand what lenders consider. Now, lenders considers uh, lenders consider a few things to approve a business acquisition loan, especially if you don't want to put any cash down. So they look at the personal finances, the finances of the acquired business. They look at uh, things like uh, the additional data. So business valuation, the, your related experience, business plan, future projections, value add. They look at uh, business valuation. So the, the lender is going to want to have the most accurate estimate for the value of the business you plan to buy. And this valuation number is one factor lenders use to assess your risk level as a borrower. And you may need to get a formal business valuation from an independent company during the loan process. And at the very least, you should be able to provide the lender with key financial statements pertaining to the business, such as a statement of cash flow, profit and loss statement and balance sheet. You also need a letter of intent. So lenders will consider a letter of intent. This is drafted by the buyer and spells out the proposed terms of purchasing the business to the seller. You'll need a copy of this letter to share with your lender when applying for an acquisition loan. And typically a letter of intent includes a clause stating that the offer is contingent on the buyer qualifying for financing. And so this gives you a way out of the deal if you fail to qualify for the loan. Step number six, folks. So step number one, strengthen your creditworthiness. 
Number two, you want to perform due, di due diligence on the target business. Number three, you want to buy an industry research report. Number four, you want to know which you, you want to know key types of business acquisition loans. Number five, you want to understand what lenders consider. And number six, I want you to determine how much business financing you need. This is this section is a quintessential, folks. If you're asking for a, a loan to buy a business with no money down, you better have an idea, and I mean a clear idea, of the financing you need. Because a lender will ask you for a detailed list of why you need the funding and how the money will be used. And you want this list to be very specific. So, for example, are you seeking the funds for expansion? Are you refinancing a, an existing uh, loan that is on the books, is on the company's books? Are you purchasing assets in, an, in anticipation of a busy season? So while it's tempting to seek as much money as you can get your hands on, you only want to ask for as much as you need, really, because, again, this is not a grant. <laughs> it is a loan. So you're going to have to pay that back. And hopefully you want to use the cash properly so you can turn around, the, you can turn the business around, the business you are buying around. And uh, so that business can generate enough cash so you can pay, you can pay back the, the bank. So you really want to create a detailed list of the items you will purchase as well as their estimated cost. And uh, another question you might want to think about is, will you be hiring employees like many small businesses currently are? So you want to document the projected cost to hire and how much the employee will be paid, the employee or employees. And are you purchasing equipment also? You want to research what equipments and an average cost to acquire that equipment. So the, the picture I'm trying to paint here is that if you're able to figure out how much you need and how long of a repayment term you need, then things will be a lot easier for you because then you have a clear idea of uh, what you need to and what kind of numbers you need to include in your financial projections to estimate how much you need and where you will be able to pay it back. There are several uh, ways, several methods to identify, uh, to, to, to um, calculate, if you will, to calculate the amortization of a loan whether it is a uh, an acquisition business acquisition loan or just some other kind of uh, business um, financing. All right, step number seven, last but not the least. I want you to find the right business acquisition loan. So I've explained to you the different types of uh, business acquisition loans with no money down. I've explained to you the fact that you needed to, you, you actually needed to strengthen your credit worthiness. You needed to perform due diligence on the target business. You needed to buy an industry research reports to sort of uh, increase your knowledge of the industry you're gonna get yourself into. You needed to know uh, the key types of business acquisition loans. You need to understand what lenders consider when approving or rejecting business acquisition loans. And uh, you've also now determined how much business financing you need. Now let's talk about, let's zero in on the right business acquisition loan for you. The f there are several lenders that we have done the research on and uh, this lenders, the lenders I'm gonna show you right now on the screen are some of the best when it comes to business acquisition loans. And those lenders can lend you money to perform several business acquisition activities, including um, purchasing an already successful business, growing your business by acquiring a big competitor, opening a new location that uh, a competing company once occupied. And remember, all the lenders I'm going to show you today are actually uh, lenders who will uh, approve you for a no money down business acquisition loan if you have the right, if you qualify. So you can also use business acquisition financing to buy out a partner from a business you already own. Okay, so I just want you to think uh, a little, a little large here. So first we have Lenza. So Lenza is pretty cool when it comes to uh, business acquisition. They have great terms. They will accept you if you have, um, if you don't want to put any money down. They will look at other factors. Then you have Funding Circle. Also a great player. We have actually covered a funding circle on, on other shows. They are present in uh, the business 
realm, but also on the personal realm of uh, funding and uh, lending. Same thing for Lendio. So Lendio also has uh, great business acquisition loans at uh, good good uh, terms. You have One Park Financial. One Park Financial is, is also um, present in that space. Another firm that you might want to consider is a Connect to Capital. In terms of business loans, you can use them to acquire a business. And then you have Live Oak Bank. And uh, this bank actually uh, also uh, advances funds for mergers and acquisition loans, acquisition loans, and other types of uh, similar financing. All right, folks, this was it for today's conversation. I was speaking to you about how to get a loan to buy a business with no money down. Number one, I want you to strengthen your credit worthiness. Number two, perform due diligence on the target business. Number three, I want you to buy an industry research report. Number four, you need to know key types of business acquisition loans. Number five, you need to understand what lenders consider when uh, rejecting or approving business acquisition loan uh, loans with no money down. Number six, you need to do, uh, determine how much business financing you need. And number seven, last but not the least, you need to find the right business acquisition loan. Thank you so much for your attention. I really appreciate it. I will see you next time. But until then, remember, stay marvelous. <laughs>